So today we're going to walk through this menu right here. Now we can add help to this menu by clicking on there. So let's go ahead and just show you a few things on how to add help to your screen. So this is the first one. You'll have to excuse me. My internet connection is very slow right now. But here's how you do help. And we're going to walk through how to build this. It's very, very simple. And if you hold your mouse on here, as it says here, it'll disappear in 10 seconds, right? So this is a very easy way to, um, to do help. But additionally, you can do help, um, for example, this right here. Just This is a generic advertisement. But you can put detailed information inside there as well. So we're going to walk through both of these and providing help on your applications especially um, will make the applications more usable for your users so let's go ahead and jump right into it all right so the first thing let's just talk about this simple one here this question mark and throughout this app there's many of these settings so we're going to go ahead and just draw this down so you can see what it is i'm in the on select area here i have that question mark icon so remember if you've never done this which if you're viewing this video you are familiar with this but i'll i'll just review real quick go to insert and then if you just type in help I think it comes up as the icon. There it is. You select it, and then it comes right into this environment. And then um, you can adjust its properties. I do 25 by 25. So that's that's it. Okay? Once you get that done, on select, remember, is well, these are the actions related to um, that button. And here it is right here. So here's the code. So pause the video right now. Um, this is where you're going to get the code. Actually, let me explain first, and then I'll give a second for you to pause, and we'll proceed forward. So you'll want to type in notify, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and inside the parenthesis, put two quotes. Quote, 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 right? And then just type in whatever the text is that you want within those quotes. So you can see here, I'm highlighting. That's the text of the message right here. Do you see that? So... And then you just have open parenthesis, okay? Open parenthesis, open quote, close quote. And then we want to put notification type. Now, notification type varies. There's different types of formatting. I happen to like success. So if we go back here and we just hit dot, notice there you've got error, information, success, and warning. Um, and I can't remember what error is. I want to say red. Um, warning, I think is orange. This is like a gray and success is a green. So I use success a lot because I, I, you know, it's not an emergency. I'm trying to give them information. Then you close the parenthesis. That's it. Literally, it is that simple. So I promised I would stop on the code. So I'm going to pause here for a minute. Go ahead and pause the video right now. Copy down this code for this button. Remember, it's the on select. All right, here's the icon on select within your screen. Okay, well, hopefully you've unpaused now and we're ready to proceed to the next step. So that was as easy as it is to do what we call notify. And you can do that anywhere. You can also wire this into notify right after an action, for example. You may have, I don't know, a save and then you want the action to post something just in the upper um, left-hand corner of your screen saying, hey, the save was successful, and have it disappear in a second or something like that. So, excuse me, you can do all of that type of stuff. Okay, the second thing we're going to talk about today is adding an image, and we're going to actually add an image together today. So here, I put this little picture frame icon here, it, and notice here that I have it going to a... Um, pop bowling equals true. So this is a pop-up screen, and I'm going to walk you through exactly how to do everything related to this. So let's go ahead and do it together. Okay, first thing we want to do is we want to say, okay, great, we've got this icon now in. Now let's create what that's going to look like. So I'm going to, first of all, grab the image that I want. To do that, I'm going to go here to my little media section, now, to my knowledge, all you can add are 
MP3 files and um, image files. And if you notice here, this background is actually an image file. You can also do background color and, excuse me, background image for image files. But anyways, that's for another video. So let's go ahead and enter in some, upload some, some, a video, excuse me, an image that I want for the screen. Now I've, I use um, TechSmith products primarily um, and they have Snagit. And so, but you can do this literally with anything you want. Um, but you need to get the picture into a PNG or JPG, some sort of image format. All right, so I have the file sitting here in my downloads directory called DC Home Screen PNG. I'm just going to click on that file, okay? And we're going to add that file into our image folder. Now remember, we're just going to click on the file here, and then we're going to hit open. Okay, now it's loading in the media into Power App. So it's actually loading the image, and there it is right there. Okay, so we're just going to drag this image. Actually, if you just double click on it, it'll appear on your screen. Um, let me get rid of one of them. All righty. Now we have the image right here, and we're just going to drag this down. We can hold the shift key to kind of keep it in shape for us. Okay. Now you can see how we've gone ahead and annotated a little bit on the screen as well. Okay. So I've kind of made it um, just kind of a screen. So we're going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Now this is a little messy, isn't it? It's a little confusing. So let's go ahead and insert a rectangle. So we're going to just go up here to insert. And we're going to type in rectangle once insert comes up. Boy, this connection is killing me tonight. So let's just type in rectangle. We're just going to click on that. And then that will add a rectangle. And let's go ahead with the rectangle. And we're just going to set a kind of a background block here for us. Okay. So we're just going to drag that bad boy over. Something like, whoops, that's a lot, huh? All right, so we're just going to drag that into place, okay? And now um, we need to go back to that image that we just pulled in, which is this image right here. And we're going to say, oh, okay, let's go ahead and make that in front. So we're just going to do a right click and say reorder, bring to front, Okay, so now it's going to bring open that image. Now we can see that image. It's a little more um, kind of isolated from the other image. So we can kind of clean that up a little if we like, or we can just kind of keep it the way it is. It doesn't, it really does not matter. However you want to present this. Now for me, there's a lot of blue going on on this screen. So I'm going to touch this up. Okay, well, let's say that's good. So we're going to go ahead and select the image itself over here on the left-hand side. And then we're going to select the rectangle underneath it. Okay, select them both there. Now, the one thing that we're missing is a cancel button. So we need to add that real quick. So let's go ahead and add cancel. Just hit on insert and type in cancel. Okay, and I like to use the badge. You can use whatever you like, but I like to use the badge. And I always put my cancel in the upper right-hand corner. So we're going to do that. Okay. All right. And so we can adjust that as needed. There we go. All righty. Now, um, that looks like we got everything. So let's go ahead and select those three components right there. All right. And now we're going to group them together. We're going to group them together. So we're going to do a right click on the file over there and we're going to hit group. Okay. So, so far we added these images right here. Then we added them to the screen. We added a rectangle as a background. We added the cancel button and now we're grouping them together. So let me pause. You need to be at this spot right here at group because now we're going to put a little bit of code in and we're going to make this all work.
So I'll pause here just for a minute. Go ahead. You're doing a great job. Keep going. All right. Good job. So I'm going to go ahead and name this group to GRP home screen. Okay. And remember, you can do that by clicking on the group up here or double clicking here and renaming it, whatever works for you. We're just going to click out of there. Okay. So now we've got GRP home screen. What we need to do is create a variable so that we can create a pop up screen. So let's go ahead and just set this variable real quick. So we're going to click on the home screen there. Okay, that's the screen we're working on. And here we're going to do the on visible. See it right there? On visible. And you see here we've already set one. So we're going to set another one. We're just going to type in set. Okay. And then we're going to type in the name that we want to give it. Since we named it home screen, let's just call it pop, excuse me, P-O-P, -P, home screen. Okay. And then we're going to set its value right out of the gate to false. Okay. Oops, false. If I could spell right, we'd be okay. All right, false. There you go. Okay, so now we've set this up. Now what we need to do is wire in these two buttons right here. False means that it's not on the screen, and that's the default we want it to be at. So if we click on this guy here, that means we want, when it's clicked, we want it to go away. So that, what do you think we should set that same pop variable to when we select, whoops, when we select that button. Anybody? That's right. We select on select. And when we select that button, we're going to reset that pop-up value. And that pop-up value, remember, was pop. Okay. And um, I think it was home screen, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Pop home screen to false. Okay. All right. This computer is a little slow right now. A little frustrating, but um, we're going to go ahead and then type, put that in right there. So now we've set, when you click on that button, it's going to say pop false home screen pop home screen is false meaning that we do not want it to be true and i'm going to show you why that matters in just a minute to get the pop screen on the screen we're going to click on the button here i just added a button there and notice here on that button we want it to say pop home screen but this time we want it to say true okay so when we click on that button pop home screen is going to come up now, it sounds great, right? But there's one important step that most people forget. You have to change this right here. You have to change its items. Excuse me. You have to change its default. I'm sorry. My head is in 12 different directions today. You need to change its visible so it's not items or default or fault default it's visible so meaning that we need to associate that pop variable that we created called pop home screen we need to relate it to this group so we're going to just take out the code here and we're just going to call it that right there for visible we're just going to say pop home screen now notice that once we said pop home screen the home sc that help file disappeared on us because the default value for that pop home screen is right there is set to false so if we if that was set to true then it would be on the screen still so let's go ahead and hit play and test what we've done so now we'll be able to just click on this and and the and that instructional file should come up and it does now Notice that it's kind of widened it out. We have an example, and then if we click on the X, 
it goes away. So again, you click on it, it comes up. Oh, okay, here's number one, here's number two. I'm good to go, select for additional help. Oh, okay, and then I close. And that's as easy as it is to create two forms of help for your Power App screens, just so you can make it a little easier for your users. So today, remember we reviewed how to do Navigate, which gives us this screen right here in green and, and lets us give a prompt to the user. In addition, we've done it with a visual, which is right here, um, that, that makes it obvious as well. Now, one thing I'm gonna change about this, because it's not quite as obvious, so I'm going to go in and notice I want to make a change. So if I want to make a change to something in here, notice it's grouped. It's okay that it's grouped. I can just select the item within the group and make the changes. Now notice over here that my border happens to be set to zero. I'm going to set my border to three. And that might be too much, but I'm going to set it to black. And actually, let's just leave it at blue. Let's see what that looks like. So here, we just set the border to blue. We didn't change the group or the properties or impact anything at all to do with this pop-up. But that looks a lot nicer, doesn't it? Now we have the pop-up value there. Everything looks great. They just hit go. And so now the, the user has plenty of help with online help, showing them exactly what to do, what to select, when to select it. All oh, goodness. Good luck.